Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the A to B podcast, your number one military source for military entertainment and entrepreneurship. Today, we have um, it's going to be a very interesting podcast, I would say. Mm. We have mm. retired Sergeant because Major, I'm here. recently retired, yeah. Sergeant Major Sellas, okay, hey, from the C 130 Squadron up in the house. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Hey, Sergeant Major, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, would you like, for the rest of the podcast, would you like to address us as as Sergeant Major Sellas, or would you like to? How would you like to to address be addressed? Josh, should we be a parade Josh? rest? No, 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 Josh. <laughs> okay, because and yeah. of course, as you guys know, I'm always with my co-host mm. Barry Bull. What's up, Barry? How I you wear doing? my sunglasses <laughs> at night. Hey, what's up, guys? We're motivated. It's Taco Tuesday, Tequila Tuesday, whatever it is. Yeah. But don't be having no tequila or tacos unless you did a couple push-ups. Hell yeah! All so right? I'm feeling extra motivated today, man. I'm yeah, telling for you, man. once. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm for t- a I'm Paris always, Island guy, it's like that's not normal. You know, I'm always motivated. Yeah, lies, let's, guys. Let, let's be real. Mentira. But anyways, um, as you guys can see, is the holidays. I got my holiday cheer on. I got uh-huh. my my ugly sweater. Please leave me a comment. Yeah. To see if you guys like my holiday uh, a sweater. It's Santa Claus with a beer. Of course, we're Marines. We like to drink beer. Yeah. Bruh. Hell yeah. Er, we got a bunch go. we got a bunch of topics today for Josh and just for the for the rest of you guys out there. So just a quick uh recap of what we're gonna be talking about today. And I bring this up because if there's something out there that we don't touch on that you think we should, mm-hmm. let us know. This podcast is for you, it's for the people, by the people. All right, so a couple of topics we got on here. Hazing. All right, is has the Marine Corps or the military gone woke? BCP, for those of you who don't know, that's uh, the Marine Corps Body Composition Program, Weight Control, whatever you want to call it. Um, NCO panels, transitioning out of the military, staff NCOs, right? Or if you're Army or what have, your, uh, what have you, senior NCOs. NJP is the command out to just burn Marines. And uh, and then the other ones will leave as a surprise. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm start it off. I'm gonna start it off, uh, 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 Josh. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you the first question, right? Yeah. Let's let's address the 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 haters real quick, man. But I love the haters. Don't get me wrong. But well, I, I do want to address them. You know why? Because for every hater, uh huh, I get like four new people that are behind of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. So thank you, haters. I appreciate you guys talking. What are the to haters us. saying? We should do an episode where we read mean comments. True. <laughs> so what the haters are saying, yeah. what the haters are saying is that we only bring turds to the podcast. Yeah. So we brought a major turd, like a piece of, like a piece of 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 dog shit. Okay? Wow. So, okay. but here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. Um, yeah. I, we brought in a major. Apparently, he's a turd. Yeah. He's a major, right? Did people say that? Yeah, people say, yeah, believe it what? or not. Yeah, uh-huh. but believe it or not, we only bring turds. The guy did 20 so, years, retired major. So, so Josh, I yeah. have a question for you. How do you feel and what do you have to say to the haters that say that we only bring in turds to the podcast? I think it's pers- turd is perspective, right? So you may have a perspective of being a turd, yeah. and you may say, like, some people are, are turds based yeah. on the way that they look or maybe some one interaction with that individual 10 years ago. Um, but it's a fixed mindset, right? And so people change and people grow. Yeah. For me, I don't consider myself a turd. I'm a hardworking Marine. I've always been hardworking. I care tremendously about my Marines and any Marines that, um, that have worked with me know that. Yeah, your perspective is he's a turd, he's overweight, he's on BCP, but the CO's, the maintenance chief's perspective, he's got quals. He's a rock star. He's he got get, quals. He, he just fills the plane and it starts. That was a joke, you guys. Now, okay. let me, let that me, never happens. Let me go ahead and ask you a follow-on question for that. Because I think the the followers here on, on YouTube uh, and TikTok and Instagram would definitely appreciate that. Have you ever encountered one of your peers as a sergeant major, 8999, that has been a turd or just simply stopped caring just because he's been in 25 plus years in the military? I think every sergeant major that I've ran into, um, they care tremendously about the organization. But if you are, so let's say if you classify a turd as someone that is super hyper aggressive and screaming and yelling at Marines, and yeah, maybe you could, you've ran into sergeant majors that are turds. Uh, for me, uh, I've had sergeant majors cause tremendous stress on me as a first sergeant specifically, um, and I would be frustrated with that individual when I would go home, but. Uh, what I found over time is each one of those that have been extremely tough on me has uh, allowed me to help me grow. 
Um, yeah. So it, it goes back to terms of perspective, right? I, I haven't seen a SAR major uh, that I've worked with just drop their pack and say, hey, you know what? I don't care about Marines. I'm just focused on Yeah, retiring. like retired on active duty. Right. Never. So I, I have not worked with a SAR major at that level. I, I When I was on recruiting duty in 06, maybe I had a SAR major that I – he wasn't as involved as I thought, and I heard he was mm. retiring. So that was like the the word on the street and recruiting was like, hey, Sergeant Major doesn't care. He's retiring. Um, but, uh, you know, I was working at MAG-11. Shout out to the MAG-11. Hell crew. yeah. Shout out to MAG-11 doing God's work out there. Let's go. Uh, and you know, six or seven of us retired from, from MAG-11. Um, and every single one of those Marines worked to the last week or the last day uh, in office. And so okay. I, I haven't really encountered... Okay, um, is that, is that, because here's one of my gripes. One of my gripes is, um, I've spoken to a lot of mass sergeants, master gunnies. Um, I haven't spoken to a sergeant major uh, yet about this, but a lot of, you know, that decide to go the, the other side, mass sergeants and master gunnies, that literally I ask him, okay, hey, man, you're six months away from retirement. What are you doing when you get out? I don't know. Okay, uh, skill bridge? Are you doing skill bridge? No, my command won't approve it because they need me there to the very last day. So is it a disservice that we're doing to those Marines by them? Because obviously they've dedicated 20 plus years to the institution. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't that be the time to be like, hey, man, like you're done enough. Make sure you have a good, solid transition. Yeah, this has been a conversation between me and several of my senior uh, NCOs as I've left. And I fortunately had the opportunity to do skill bridge. But I had an amazing leader uh, that took care of me. Your um, CO? Is my CO, right? So okay. Courtney O'Brien, she's a phenomenal yeah. uh, uh, Marine. And and she, she was a leader from the start when I met her, right? Like she knew that I was getting ready to transition and we started talking about a plan early, yep. right? And that allowed us to say, all right, Sergeant Major, um, you've given 23 years of service to the country. I want to make sure that you get an opportunity. Is that was to be that successful. typical? What she did? Had anyone ever done that? To no, you? that's that's atypical, right? So like normally, so all the men that you'd worked for or with, nobody did that. But then this is a, a woman, right. and I'm saying that because this just happened the other day. I saw it on the motivated gunner certain givens page. She gets these mm. comments all the time, and they're like, "This is why women should only be, you know, like I don't even know, like nurses yeah. in the military." Yeah, I've seen, I've seen comments like that before. Right? But, but so, go, but let me go ahead, finish your uh, uh, your your thought, because I know you were going to say something uh, um, following on. Yeah, so I mean, she, I've never seen a hardworking marine, right? Uh, my previous CO, he was great too, but each CO has a different uh, temperature, right? Um, but. You know, so we worked a plan to allow me to say, OK, this is kind of when I want to leave. I will. Uh, I want to do skill bridge. Are you OK with that? And she's like, yeah, I'm OK with that. I just need you to work until you leave. And and she let me leave five months out. Right. And so I did three months on my skill bridge and then went on terminal. But my replacement was there. Mm. Oh, OK. Right. And so that was a part of the planning process. Once the CEO was like, hey, you could do that then let's, let's move forward and uh, let's plan to execute to make sure that the Marines are successful. Because one of the things that I didn't want to do is leave my unit without a SAR major. I didn't want to just leave, Yeah. Mm. right? I think uh, the professional thing is to, to ensure that they have a, a SAR major in the seat when you when you roll out. Yeah, and and a follow-on question for that for all the people that don't know. So when you're a sergeant major of, the, of, the, of a command, mm. obviously you oversee the entire unit. A lot of people think that sergeant majors are just there to NJP people or, or to hold people accountable, right? But I also know that, that sergeant majors are also in charge of certain Albert's programs. trying to get me pissed off, guys. <laughs> but but he's but no, but I'm being real. Like I'm yeah. I'm you know, I've had conversations before. It's like, oh you know, oh, sergeant majors are there to, to to NJP you make sure you don't have your hands in your pocket. Okay. But <laughs> let's say let's say for example, what are some of the programs at a sergeant major level? that you would be in charge of? Yeah, so request mass, the promotion process. Um, and really, for me, I was involved in a lot of the administrative processes, right? So um, anything from the legal side for NJP, uh, I'm involved in the EO side, I'm involved in SACO. But what's interesting about the Marine Corps is each organization is different, right? So Barry's probably been in, in roles as a SAR major where he's held, held and taking care of different programs. For me, I wanted to be involved because the more that I know, the more I can help my Marines. Well, yeah, you're, you know, another one that you usually get is like the color guard. 
Yeah, you know that guard. that'll be that'll be one that gets assigned to you. Seminars, one that, landscape or seminar, Cobra scores. One yeah. that used yeah. to piss me off. That's not definitely not formally assigned to you, but for some reason, even though you're not given control of it, every sergeant major is expected to be like a glorified barracks manager, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't, I never understood that. Right. Yeah. If there's problems at the <laughs> barracks, right? Because you're laughing, but because we we used to rap about this all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like they, you know, oh yeah, there's issues in the in the barracks, Sergeant Major. You know, you got to get involved, mm. but then they don't want to totally relinquish control to you, right? Right, because it's not the <laughs> barracks manager. There's some civilian there that like oversees it, right? So mm. those are some of the some of the. Yeah, I think it's funny with the barracks conversation because really we're talking leadership, yeah, right, and the Sergeant Major. It's different in each unit, too, because, like, the air wing, you're kind of like, you have to do the job of a first sergeant and you have to do the job of a sergeant major, mm. right? And a lot of people Facts. think they're the same. A sergeant major and a first sergeant are not the same. The jobs are not the same. Mm. Uh, you know, the sergeant major is looking more at a strategic level of engagement, and the first sergeant's more hands-on on the ground. That's the way that I kind of break it out in a very simple okay. term. Um, but really, the barracks is is a symptom of your culture and your organization. Hmm. So if you have trust and respect, mutual respect between your NCOs and staff NCOs, then you can help make a better environment for your Marines. So that means that they invite, they're like happy when a staff NCO comes by and checks out their room or yeah. a staff NCO just drops in on the weekend. Not because the SAR major told you to, but because you actually care about the condition your Marines are in, not only at the barracks, but also at work. Man, we we I don't think this is the way that the conversation was gonna go at the start, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on that, right? Because I, I understand that. And I've had sergeant majors, I've served with sergeant majors that have that give a fuck for a lack of better words mm-hmm. of how my Marines are doing. Right. The problem is you only one person. Yeah. How do you as a sergeant major motivate your staff NCOs in order for you to create that culture? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a perfect question. I love Where it. they care, you're saying? Like, how, how do you how do you fix give a fuck? How do you do? Well, that I'll tell you, as you know, sergeant major, I'll tell you the message from the institution to staff NCOs. If you look at how much training and education is given to staff NCOs, doesn't send a message that I care. Staff NCOs are often blamed for every problem in the organization. They're blamed for Hello. the junior problems and they're blamed for <laughs> senior problems. But we're not we're not going to pay you either, though. Yeah, we're not. Gonna, we're not going to pay you. We're not going to compensate you for all. You will be in the OYC's billet for a year. <laughs> yep. Barry, I will tell you something. I got to make a pop. <laughs> people are destroying you in the comments because you keep interrupting people. Because <laughs> people I mean, keep get... destroying you in the comments. He gets so excited. Bring though. it on. He gets Bring excited. It on. He gets excited, yeah. guys. Okay, he gets excited. No, it's but, great perspective. Though, yeah, Barry. he gets excited. But yeah, go like go ahead. Uh, like I truly want to hear it. I truly want to hear it. How do you fix it? How do you really fix it? Well, I'll tell you what I did in, in, in my previous unit is I built relationships with each one of my staff NCOs. Hmm. And I showed and, and I tried my best to show them that I actually care about their progression and where they're going in their career and in their life. OK, because how can you get somebody to care about Marines when you are setting an example of you don't care about your Marines? And what I mean by that is if you're the Sergeant Major or the Master Gunnery Sergeant, you should be showing your staff NCOs that you care. You should be counseling them. You don't have to write it down yeah. physically, but you can stop in their office and be like, hey, dog, I heard about, you know, this thing that happened with your section the other day. And uh, I heard you were kind of like, like really hard on the Marines, mm-hmm. you know. And, and so what happened with that? And here's another mm. perspective. And how that Marine is going to receive that information. If you're yelling and screaming at him, or if you're yelling and cussing at him, how's he going to receive that information? Are you building trust, right? And this is something I saw and it just kind of clicked just a few months ago is you can have Marines in situations and your staff and CO and you're, let's say you, you can yell at the Marine for being late. Um, you can dictate their schedule and each individual action or situation by itself is not looked at negatively. But if you, put them all out on the table on how you've treated X, Y, and Z Marines within your organization. The one question is, are you building trust? And for me, I think as a leader, the number one thing you have to build is trust. And so how do you build trust? You know where your staff and COs are from. You know what their family situations are. Hmm. You get shoulder to shoulder with them to fix problems. You don't just tell them to fix the problem and hide in the castle. You go down next to them 
and you work through the problem and you say, hey, I, I'm not, for me, I used to say it all the time, I'm not an air winger, but can you listen to my perspective? Mm -hmm. Can I listen to your perspective and offer advice yeah. that you can or cannot do? I'm not gonna force you to do that. And then the other thing is I had a weekly staff and CEO meeting and I didn't force my staff and CEOs to come to the meetings, but mm -hmm. they know decisions are made in that meeting. So if you're not at the meeting and it wasn't important, now obviously some people have appointments and things that, yeah, that they have to deal with. But if you're at work and you chose not to come to that meeting because you wanted to go work out, that's cool. But we're making decisions there. And if you're going to come question the decisions, come to the meeting. Yeah, after the fact. Because that's right. usually what happens. Oh, well, I'm too busy to go to that meeting. And then all of a sudden, you don't go to that meeting. A decision gets made and then you want to question it. Right. And, and you know, that's frustrating for, for a leader. Of okay, course. so you're saying that one way is get to know your staff and CEOs. Right. And the, and the other way is you had a staff and CEO meeting. Right. And you're you're saying, hey, this is how I feel you should build trust. Given the current construct, those are two like your go to methods for building that trust and showing staff and CEOs that you care. Yeah, it's two of them. The other thing that I did uh, is I got resources from MCCS. Right. And mm -hmm. so they teach a lot of wonderful classes that they align do. with our uh, leadership uh, order. Right. And one of them is uh, down at Miramar. They teach this class called Great Teams, Great Leaders, uh, Great Results. Nice. And so I scheduled classes for my staff and CEOs to go to. And I didn't just say everybody's going to do it at once. We broke it up. Yeah. Right. And broke the class up over time because it's a few days of teaching the class. But helping them learn how to communicate. One, with your Marines. And then two is communicating the vision, the priorities and the mission at each level. Correct. And then you, tying those together. Do you think it helped oh. them communicate all around, like at home with their spouse? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why do I feel like you maybe got some pushback trying to implement that? <laughs> I did have a little bit of pushback because I started <laughs> when I was new. And, you know, when you're the new SAR major, you're like full of piss and vinegar, right? Like, I mean, because like, we got a flight schedule. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and, and, and what they like to do in the air wing is hide behind the flight schedule. No offense, mm. Opso, but it's the truth. Damn. Uh, <laughs> but, it, you know, they're like, oh, we got this flight schedule. So it's a reason for them not to PT. It's a reason for them not to, to do things as a unit mm. and those things. Right. Um, but when we don't PT, we hurt our Marines. Yeah. And that sure. goes back to building trust. Like, I want you to go PT. How can we work through the flight schedule to go PT? And one of the things that we did and for the staff and CEOs, I'm like, hey, let them go during the day. When it's a low in their work, particular work section, mm -hmm. tell them to go PT. Yeah. And just give them that opportunity up front. Yeah. Let the sergeants lead. Like the sergeants are there on the ground. Let them make the decision. Send Marines to PT. Come back. Because they do it anyways. Mm -hmm. And when they gave me pushback on that, I'm like, all right, where's Jones? Oh, Jones is at the PX. Okay. I've had situations where I've asked for a Marine for three hours and he's been at the PX. Was he at the PX? I doubt it. But- that's my point is you have time during the day. Yeah. You just have to get innovative about how you're going to, you know, work everything in. And so there was a little wow. bit of pushback for that. Yeah, this is this is definitely a great perspective. And and I think those are the right answers, to be honest with you. Like I wasn't I wasn't expecting those those answers, but those are 100 percent the right answers. How do you do it? You build trust. I particularly agree with the fact that you said that the institution has said I posted a video the other day about the commandant of the Marine Corps, General Smith, saying after 10 years, 15 years, we kind of had you. We could have sent you anywhere that we want. And my gripe, to be honest with you, and I we've spoke about this off camera it's not with General Smith anymore. At the beginning, when he first when he first came out saying those type of things, and he made he got himself famous before he was commandant by saying, "Oh well, your only incentive should be that you get you called yourself a marine. Your bonus, yeah. Your bonus should be that you get you call yourself a marine." And at the beginning, I was like, "Wow, that's the type of guy that we're gonna have." But then I did more research on him, and I saw that he's been constant. With everything, with all the things that he's been saying, maybe not the right things, but I can work with that. Mm. You know why? Because that's a guy that whenever you sit down with him front to front, you know he's going to give you the truth. The real sneaky freaking snake ass leaders that I've encountered is the ones. And I'm sorry, but it, they've been higher ranking individuals, yeah. you know, sergeant majors and stuff that they go, oh, well, buddy, they pat you in the back. Yeah, we're going to work with that. We care about family, specifically on recruiting duty. We care about family. We care about this. We care about that. Yeah. And then next thing you know, that's a, a meeting with all the Marines. Next thing you know, staff NCO stay behind. And their persona completely changes. Yeah. And then I'm like, 
bro, didn't you tell the Marines that we were going to do this, going to do that, and then you tell us, like you're saying, so that way we can get blamed for everything. Right. And then the CEO goes like, three months later, hey, Marines, great job for everything that you're doing. And the next thing you know, the CEO's like, staff NCOs, what the fuck is going on with this? <laughs> and I'm like, Jesus Christ, the best leaders that I've worked with, one of them, his name is Colonel Lang. I'll give him a shout out. Hey, get, you got to press that shit like five times. Hey, <laughs> Colonel Lang, I'm telling you, he is the best leader that I've ever served with because mm. that dude, he will he will be talking for to the entire SP MACTAF, and he will be the same person as yep. if you were talking with him one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. That's the type of leaders, and that's how you do that, with trust. That's right. Because you know that, that you have that trust with that leader because he's the same person. Yeah. I don't know why, and maybe you guys can answer this, why is there a need to have a different persona when you get to those high-ranking positions. Mm, power corrupts. Is that is that what Insecurity. it is? Insecurity. Really? Yeah. You, you, I've seen that because I've had leaders that I've worked with that we will not name, but I've had leaders that I've worked with that as soon as... <laughs> they shall not be named. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As soon as you... But we talked about them off camera and we know who they are. <laughs> I know, I know. Albert knows. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, no, as soon I'm as you, my chapstick on. As soon as you're trying to, like, legitimately as a team member, yeah. as a peer, bring up yeah. a positive recommendation to work together, it's like you don't know, right? And you get mm. treated that way. And if you treat your peers that way, you're definitely going to treat your Marines that way. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a, you know, back to the staff and CEOs, you know, staff and CEOs get blamed all the time. It, it, it really, like, frustrates me as, as I've retired and I've had a chance to sit back and I hear the things that are going on in social media. You know, the staff NCOs in the Marine Corps specifically mm -hmm. are the reason why the Marine Corps is successful. Hello. 100%. Because when we talked off camera, this is the impression I got. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. We don't pay them. We don't compensate them. Maybe right. that's a better word to, right. to the degree that we should. Yep. Which sends a signal that we really don't care about you. Yep. We're going to use you for every job, the, every, you know, fill in the blank, mm -hmm. fill in the crack, right? Mm -hmm. But we're also not going to educate you, yep. but we're always going to blame you. Yeah. And that frustrates you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it does frustrate me. You know, it's the same thing. Like, Marine wants to go, let's say you got a gun and your staff sergeant wants to go be a uh, McNinja, right? Mm -hmm. And now you can't let that Marine go because too valuable. of some BS excuse. Yeah. Well, they're leaving the unit. I had a staff and show we sent. Uh, at the Raiders, we sent them to to be a McNinja, and right before they got back, they PCS'd. And and the the leadership, you know, they they're like, Josh, why are we why are we sending the Marine? I was like, because he's going to add value to another or another part of the exactly. Marine Corps. Exactly. And he's going to have a good taste about who we are as the Raiders. You know, but you don't, know? dude. Here's the thing that pisses me off, and because here's why: because when some happens. Who are they going to say? And you send a dirt bag to another unit. Who are they going to say? Call that, call that person in the unit. Are they going to call the CO? No. no. Are they going to say, call the master guns? No. Nope. Are they going to say, call the gunny? No. Call the Sergeant Major. Yeah. Yeah. Sergeant Major sent you a dirt bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it gets pinned on you. That's right. I mean, for me, I, I think, like, I've always said that Marines are worthy of uh, opportunity. And you need to give them opportunity. If you want great people to stay in our organization, you have to give them opportunity. And then the other thing that I think is going on, and, and, and this is kind of a touchy subject right now, is the skill bridge, right? We don't let our senior leaders go on skill bridge after 23 years of service exactly. in combat. We don't Thank take you. care of our combat veterans. Thank you. That, that is a huge problem for me. And here's the other part, and, and this is about retention. You, right now, what are we doing on retention for all our junior Marines? Oh, we're paying them. We're giving we're them, giving bonuses. them bonuses. Do Where do you want to go? And, and, and don't get me wrong. I don't SDA know, preferences? I think, hey, if we could take care of our Marines, let's do it. Yeah. But... When you're doing all of that and then you're shutting the gate on our senior leaders, you think those junior Marines don't see that? The problem is going to be 15 years from now when those junior Marines are leaders. They're going to leave in droves. So when the you're, Marines saying, you're saying <laughs> yeah. that they're Ooh, getting they're getting, you know, that compensation, that Ooh, recognition. Boy. But they're also thinking about the fact that if I stay for another 15 years, I'm going to get treated less like he did. That's yeah. right. The gunny that's been to combat six times. Because and yeah. the, the face is off. Like, like I'm telling you, we are. It's it's good that we're doing this because we are literally blowing the lid off uh, the lid out of this thing. 
because that is exactly what's going on. Look at the remarks that the commandant is saying. Look at the words of Sergeant Major Black in the video that I made. It was like, you, you recruit a Marine, but you retain a family. And then they don't give a shit about your family once you've passed that threshold of right. 10, 10, 12 years. They don't get, they, yeah. don't, they, they stop Some caring. of those comments I think are a little bit tongue in cheek. And what I think happens that I can, you know, as a Sergeant Major, it's like you say certain things, you're not always aware of what gets said when you walk away from the formation, when you leave the meeting, because there's usually another subordinate level leader. Yep. To totally undercut what they f what he said, we ain't doing that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And Sergeant Majors, did he bop and COs, did he bop and back? We love families. No, I'm sorry. It's not even. I I I I respect that, but it's not even. It's not even the the subordinate leader. In my experience, it wasn't even the subordinate leaders. Yeah, it was those peers, again, those Sergeant Majors. That well, when I was a gunny. Yeah. I had to go through this so you can suck it the fuck up and do it as well. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. And, and, and that's and, when I stopped that's when I stopped getting help. Because now I look like a fucking complainer and a bitch. Right. Whenever it was really it was really like Nah, man, like y'all saying all this stuff. Right. I'm not making it up. I'm cool with yeah. the fact that you can say no. Business as usual. And I'm like, "Aye aye." And then I just execute business as usual. Yeah. But whenever you're saying that you're trying to implement that change, because change don't happen overnight. That's right. Oh, well, that's in 2030. That message was for 2030. Well, if you want, if you want change by 2030, you got to start in 2022. That's why they right. released that's, that message in 2022. Right. You know, but they hide behind the fact. Oh, that's in 2030. That's a long term plan. Oh, 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 oh that we, we're not doing that yet. You know, it's OK to say I would I would much rather people say like, hey, you know what? We released this a little bit too early. That, that will give people more credibility. That will get Headquarters Marine Corps. Because I can uh, guarantee you Headquarters Marine Corps right now. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. And my, at least that that's what comes off. You know, because and you you know how I know? Because they're trying to get credibility with the Marines. Mm. Think about it. Again, and I hate reverting back to that freaking talent management thing. I hate it. I hate reverting back. But what are some of the things that we did? Oh, pregnancy. That got implemented really quickly. That got all the Marines all happy. You tell me I'm a male and I get to get three months off of off, off, off if I have a kid. I can guarantee you the, the birth ratio went up in the Marine Corps. Oh, yeah. That was the first thing. The second thing, what Has happened? Has that ever really been an issue? Tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> second one, <laughs> tattoos. Oh, yeah, we're going to allow full yeah. sleeves again. Yeah. Yeah. But then the things that are going to create a true organizational impact. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're still working on those. Well, I mean, it's, you know, to add to what you say about, you know, staff and COs, oh. and you, we've talked about this. I could not stand how two things. Every time you had a great one, a great sergeant, a great corporal, a great staff NCO, there's always somebody there trying to push them to be an officer. Yeah. And then, but then they'll turn around and complain about the staff NCO corps. It's weak, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or you got the one I was just talking about this the other day. I've had this happen more times than I can count where guys really can't get selected. So what do they do? Warrant officer, right. yay, right? That's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> and then we put that package in. I got I got OIC Master Sergeant crying to me about Staff Sergeant Billy Goat, who can't freaking <laughs> find his way out of a wet paper bag. Yeah. He's not there, he's incompetent, right? But then when he's gonna be a warrant officer, we love him, he's so amazing. We enthusiastically oh. <laughs> recommend, and I gotta be the bad guy and sit him down and go, mm -hmm. dog, I wouldn't recommend you for Gunny. I'm not gonna recommend that you write fitness reports on him. Mm. <laughs> I think the problem is, is like people won't tell the truth. And why don't they tell the truth? It's because they don't have trust between the, the individuals. Mm. Think about that for a second. Yeah. If you have honest trust, which is that's how you know you got friends in the Marine Corps. They make fun of you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Dark <laughs> humor. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of my friends, I kept, I wore a hat for a reason, but a lot of my friends make fun <laughs> of my new haircut. Right? Because I'm growing my hair out. My, my family loves it. Right? <laughs> and I think it's a trick, but that's fine. I love them. Shout out to my fam. <laughs> but, uh, but my friends, they be like, Josh, in the photos, it looks like you need to go bald. 
right? But they're like my true friends and I respect them. Yeah. They clown me and I clap. <laughs> there's a little bit of truth in there and there's a little bit of I yeah. don't care what you think type thing, right? Yeah. But uh, I think, you know, if you want to sit down and have a real conversation with someone where they're listening to you, mm -hmm. you have to already have trust. And where leaders get it jacked up is they automatically assume they have trust because of the rank that's on their collar. Yep. Boom. I mean, that, I mean, so you get well, whatever. Are level. they wrong, though? Because to a degree, it lends you credibility and relevancy automatically. Right. That's level one leadership. There's five levels. That's I just the entry. Josh, man. You can't. Unfadeable. That's the, yeah. that's the entry level. You, you get trust because of your position. But there's other levels. you got to build yeah. relationships with those individuals to influence and help them grow and put them in the right career path. You know, like. And let's say get a DUI, right? Because then we just put you on the sidelines. <laughs> yeah. And then we never let you do anything yeah. ever again. We will punish you for the remainder of your natural born life right till afterwards yeah. like even when you're retired exactly <laughs> seriously though that, yeah, that happens that, that's what pisses that me off dog that definitely we'd be we just be punishing you that yeah. definitely happens now let me I, ask you a question do the police force when they get duis are they done being a cop i don't know i don't know if anybody knows that. i thought you're I heard a law enforcement no i don't think you, is you that a trick question do you know the answer no. well I've, I've heard that they could continue yeah. Oh, if you get a DUI, yeah. if you're a cop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you. Well, this. you might be done in that particular organization. Yeah. But you could transfer to a different one. I got. Sure. I got. Um. They. I, I know here for. Ex for example, I can talk uh, a little bit about this about the LAPD. Mm -hmm. They don't mess around whenever it comes to those uh, screening tests that they do. Yeah. I had a client of mine that they were gonna buy a home here in uh, in California, and they couldn't. They couldn't buy the home. They were looking up in uh, in LA, and they couldn't buy the home just because. His brother, no, it wasn't, yeah, I think it was his brother, was a corrupt cop. He had no relationship with his brother, hasn't talked to his brother in like 10 plus years. Wow. But they found the connection because of their last name, and he couldn't be a cop because his brother was a corrupt cop. Wow. Yeah. Hello. And, and yeah, that, that was like, damn, man. That, and, and the thing is, he yeah. was supposed to start the police academy. Like, he already got cleared. It's like yeah. a six-month screening process. It's no 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 short thing. Right. Like, a six-month screening process. And then two weeks before, they gave him the school seat and everything. They was like, oh, no, just because of this, you can't you can't do this. Uh, yeah, if wow. you want to be an LAPD cop, try again again in, in, in a year. Yeah. Mm. You know how freaking shitty that is? That that devastated them, man. That, that threw him oh, off. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah that, that, that sure. definitely threw him off. Now, going back to this, here, I'm going to share with you guys and give me, I don't think we actually even spoken about this. Yeah. I'm going to, I want y'all to give me your honest opinions as Sergeant Majors. There I was, going to be Sergeant Ramos. Hoorah. Putting in my... Double rocker shocker. Putting in my... <laughs> Reenlistment package realm, my realm, mm. and this was when all my stuff was going on. Yeah, I don't know how familiar you are with my stuff, okay. but that's when I was like, no, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I want to reenlist, but this under this conditions. Uh -huh. Okay, you know what, my career planner, because this all started in my career planner. We love career planners. Shout out. Oh uh, well, sure. Um, <laughs> I think that's perspective. This, hey. yeah, um, we uh, not all career planners are created equal, cool. but uh -huh. one hundred percent. Yeah, we he went with under no advisement from anybody from my section, from anybody whatever. He put me as a tier three marine. Tier three. However, tier was, three. Tier three. Wow. Tier three, not were, tier two or three, or tier one. Were tier you a fruit bat marine. or something? You did one pull up. I had were, a first. You were a gunnery sergeant. I was a gunnery sergeant. Okay. That's tier three. Wow. wow. First class PFT. Who'd you make mad? First class CFT. Wow. Well, everybody up at headquarters Marine Corps by now, but first class PFT. Yeah. First class CFT. It wasn't like a 300, 300, but yeah. it was like a. Well, because when you say something. first class, we automatically think it's really low, but you barely made it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It was like a 250-something. That's what Josh it, told me. It was like yeah. a 250-something and like a 242 yeah. for my for my PFT and like 250-something. Yeah. It's a first class. Unless you're going for meritorious corporal. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. But as a gunny, that would be weird. But it's a it's a it's a first class, right? Yeah, and that's yeah, what I was yeah, told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you meet the standard, you meet the standard. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now he's going recruiter on us again. Yeah, man. I Watch agree out. with that. By the way, that two forty comment was a joke. I think if you're a first class PFT, or you can absolutely get meritorious promoted. We'll just move move on. Yeah, go, go back so, to your story. So so wow. the reason why <laughs> it was because there was another staff NCO in my same section. That's how I know. Hold on. So the guy rates you a tier three. Tier yeah. three. Hold on. The career planner. Just to be clear. The career planner. Yeah. Okay. But listen, it gets it gets better from there. 
this time I'm looking at my package yeah. and he's like, oh yeah, because he all he wanted was like sign here. Yeah. I'm like, wait, hold on a second. I'm gonna read this shit. I yeah, but hold no on, fool. hold on, hold on. Don't career planners have a system that like spits it out what it is automatically? No. For the junior marines. For the junior marines, not for the okay. staff and CEOs. Nah. That's where I'm going to. That's okay. why it's very opinionated. Oh, okay, go okay? ahead. Okay. So I'm looking at the package and I'm like, I'm sharing with one of my one of my coworkers. He's a staff sergeant, yeah. um, and then he was like, "Bro, yeah, you got a reenlistment package too. Let me see your package real quick." Yeah, but he called you Gunny, not bro. And it was like, well, I called him bro. Yeah. Okay, I, okay, yeah, okay, I okay. called him bro. All right, cool. Uh, uh, I was like, "Oh yeah, here's my package. Reenlistment package. He had tier one, second class PFT, second mm. class CFT. Wow. Yeah." Mm. Was he a drill instructor though? That's probably no. What he was a he, no. He was not. <laughs> I want I want to say any details, but but we shout, shout out to him. He was a great great person. Great marine. Great person. Uh uh. Great person. But okay. And then I go to my master guns. And it was like mm. master guns. Explain this to me. Do you think I'm a tier three? Because at this point, I'm like, man, this fucking guy had to get some type of feedback from my section. Right. And then I he go must to, have talked to somebody. Yeah, he must have talked to somebody for me to get a tier three. Yeah. So I'm like, Master Guns, do you feel this way about me? Is that how you truly feel Your about voice me? Voice is getting high. Yeah, it was like, high. but but I had a really good I, I had a really good Master Guns. <laughs> he, he knows who he is. Master Gunner, Sergeant Mancio. Shout out to Master Gunner Mancio. He was a great leader. You know what he did? What? You definitely not a tier three. Let's go talk to the career planner. Oh yeah, career planner. He, he was he, shifting. He, he looked. He looked like a disc jockey. He was going back and forth. He's like, "Well, yeah, well." And I'm like, "Oh, really?" So that's how you feel. But you know what happened? The CO and the sergeant major, uh -huh. to which I had a great relationship with, just because the career planner put tier three, they went along and put tier three as well. Just because the I promise you, what I, rank I still have was the career planner. What rank was a career planner? Gunny as well as me. Okay, uh, I was waiting for that. Okay. Yeah. So what you what would you cuz I talked to the sergeant major about this. Mm. What would be your reaction when you see that? Yeah, I mean, you want to go ahead and go for Oh, it? yeah. I mean, first of all, the career planner doesn't set the tier the, the CEO sets the tier. Right? So you could put it on the package tier 3. But the CEO and the sergeant major when they screen it, they're the ones that make like the sergeant major is going to make the recommendation and then the CEO is going to sign off on that recommendation. Mhm. Mm so there's like all kinds of like things that going on with that situation that makes me concerned. Uh, the 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 that's first part one. Part two is, is if we're gonna say a gunny's a tier three, then the sergeant major needs to sit down one on one with a gunny. You don't have to. Yeah. But going back to what I said in the beginning, mutual respect. That's a good best practice. Yeah. Right. Trust. Correct. Because the gunnies are the ones that make things happen in the Marine Corps specifically yes i would not have been as successful as where i've been throughout my entire career specifically at the raiders with it without the gunnery sergeant corps and and that's got to be a mutual respect thing yep you got to sit down and say hey this is why i think you're a tier three mm -hmm. otherwise there's a lot of questions that come up the first question to me is did you actually screen it and read it or did you just sign it and move it on that's what happened i yeah, can guarantee well, you that's what happened because I came off from one of the highs. Like my, but how, though? That's my question. Because because of what was going on with me. Because I was refusing to just simply lick the Kool-Aid and drink the Kool-Aid mm. and be like, yeah, sure, send me to North Carolina whenever my kids have freaking, uh, 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 what's it called? EFMP. Uh, EFMP problems. Yeah. yeah. No, I was like, nah, man. Like, I'm going through some shit. Look at everything that I've done with my, with, my, uh, with my career. And then I was calling, I was, at that point, I really didn't, like... Here's so the thing. You, so you think it was it was like retribution? Is that? Well, I don't know if it was retribution. I know it wasn't out. I know it wasn't normal. Yeah. And the reason why I know it wasn't normal is because a lot of people are they tend to fear challenging certain things in their right. career. Like once they get to the certain point in their career, right. because they know the influence and the power that other people, specifically, right. you know, sorry, major and yeah. NCO, mm -hmm. or and even the level. career planner, you yeah. know, exactly, mm -hmm. um, they have over their career. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't call them out. They, they they might go like, yeah, and then, oh, no, no, but it's okay, bro, like whatever. And, and look at how the conversations go with the monitors. Well, so as a sergeant major, something that isn't widely publicized, we are very protective of our staff and CEOs. We're very, um, we're gonna go to bat for you. Yeah, depending on who you are as a Sergeant Major and like what your flavor is, mm. you may come off like you're very 
abrasive to the staff and COs. I don't agree with that, but there's a lot of, you know, I know you've experienced it as, as we talked, um, and, and their personality changes. And then with the staff and COs, it's like, you're screwed up. You're not doing your job. You guys suck, right? Mm -hmm. I was never that type of guy. I know Josh was never that type of guy. I know a Sergeant Major who was in a very high visibility billet who got fired because one of his staff and COs was put on extra duties by his CO out there with like the junior Marines. So he's like out there pulling weeds and the Sergeant Major got wind of it and had some really choice words for that officer. Because you ain't going to have no lieutenant, captain, anybody else. Because they get in trouble. Mm -hmm. And you've seen it. And I've seen it. You ain't going to have no lieutenant out there pulling weeds. I'm sorry. But you can have my staff sergeant out there. You can have my gunny out there pulling weeds. You lost your freaking mind. And that was a conversation. And the sergeant major got fired for it. That he was put under investigation. All this stuff, man. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know that. And for those of you, I'm not going to name any names or commands. But when you hear that story, a lot of y'all are going to know um, who I'm talking about. So... I agree with Josh. For you to be a tier three and you be completely blindsided by that, I don't like that. I'm gonna tell you this though. Career planner shouldn't have been the one to tell you that. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna 100%. tell you. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell Straight you how up. I reacted because uh, I reacted very defensively. Yeah. Okay, I was very defensive. Naturally, about it, you know. But at the same time, how many he, tiers are there for everyone out there? Four. So if you're yeah. a tier three, what does that mean? I'm I'm scraping the bottom. You're below average. Yeah, I'm below average. Correct. I'm well, you know average. what they'll tell you though is they'll say that tier three is average. They will say tier three is but, average, but, but it kind of goes back to like the Navy. The Navy has a firewall five, right? That's Everybody's right. Everybody's a five, so then they have to break them out in a different way, and it messes with the promotion system. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think in the Marine Corps we do that a lot. You know, in our JPEs we do that a lot. In the, used to in the pros and cons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then now in the tier system, you know, because people don't want to have this conversation. If you're a tier three, you're in the top fifty-one percent. There you go. Yeah, You're but average. for Do me, math. yeah, but for me, I'm so I'm sorry, but but with the <laughs> amount y'all didn't get it with the yeah. amount of and here's how I reacted to it. Okay, sure. at the beginning I was very uh, I was very defensive, yeah. but afterwards I was like, why am I letting the opinion of other people? Because that's really all it was. Right. There was no tangible. Nothing that they could really show me. Oh, you're that. This is why you were a tier three. So I was like, man, why am I letting the opinion of other people dictate how I feel and, and play with my security, right, as a leader, essentially? Yeah. It was like, man. Can I tell you something? What? I think you were mad at the wrong people. Who should I be mad at? You should have been mad at the CO. I'd have been pissed at the CO because, you know, there's some statistic out there. Che fact check me on this, but a few years back, like over 70% of the time, the COs raise the tier. They raise it because the CO can do that. You could have, even if it's a first-termer, you could have a Marine. He's a tier four. She's a tier four. CO could be like tier one. That's what headquarters Marine Corps is going to get. They don't get what Star Major says. They don't get what career planner says. They don't know any of that. Now, yeah. if if it gets to that, if it gets to that point, can they go in the system and look at the notes from the career planner? Yeah. Okay. But it's the CO and it's the sergeant major. And I, my thing is. What made you a tier three? If there's no justification, I'm gonna tell you that looks. I'm, bad. Gonna, I'm gonna tell you the reality. I can't really say that this was the fact, but I, I, I ain't stupid. I put two and two and two together. It was be it was to bring discredit to the package that I had my AA form yeah. that I had along with my reenlistment. It was to bring that discredit because it was like. Yeah, why? Because the, the conversation up at Headquarters Marine Corps is going to be like, yeah, why should we listen to this tier three staff NCO and give him what he wants when well, he's a tier three? So we ain't going to bat an eye because nobody at Headquarters Marine Corps really bats an eye yeah. for a, a tier three anything. To me, and maybe I'm wrong, Josh, please, you will not hurt my feelings. I never really cared that much about the tiers. What I saw with reenlistments of most of the time is a bunch of weird comments and recommendations. It's like, guys, it's in the package what they are being screened for. First and foremost, I need to know, are they eligible or are they disqualified for whatever's in this book? Hmm. Okay. Can you say they are qualified to, was it, was it just a reenlistment? Yeah. It was you know, hey, are they qualified? Retain whatever. That's what I need, man. And if I'm not getting that, I get frustrated with the chain of command. Gotcha. Yeah, because they don't. Oftentimes, it's an opinion about who you are as, 
as you know at the work center or oh after he's work. great yeah. and little johnny and it's like okay yeah, but then but he's, he's not qualified de- for msg for example you're like but yeah he he doesn't meet this and this you and know? then i had to discover it right mm-hmm. why am i the one having to discover it and then i got to call the marine and talk to the marine because now i'm bypassing the leadership leaders mm-hmm. we, nobody gives us a class and i used to beat my career planners down on how to even fill these packages out and that's what i would say mm-hmm. are they I, well, most, most of them are are, are pretty self-explanatory though they it has it has like the lit that like the if you, you know, read like it. the checkbox yeah if you read, it, read that's it. the problem you know <laughs> maybe if you write you know crayon. barry that's why you laugh it <laughs> people don't read it y'all know You're, it's true it's, I true, mean, true. it's just no because reality. i was having this conversation last night bro it's like when the <laughs> when the promotion message comes out not a nary one of y'all reading that thing and i used to yeah. make my marie sit down sit down read the mar admin because right. everybody skips and goes am i in zone am i gonna get promoted this year yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right and yeah. then but it tells you everything yeah from A to Z. Yeah, yeah. Deadlines, yeah. timelines, phone numbers, how to communicate with the board, letter yeah. heads, yeah. friggin' it, verbiage, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, nobody reads that. Now, w- let's 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 take Sorry, it a step got, back. Let's fired. take it a step yeah. back whenever yeah. it comes. We've been talking about staff and CEOs. We yeah. utilize myself as a as an example, right? right? But let's talk about the NCO panel. Because oh, that man. is that is how Marines that are, you know, in the lower and, you know, not staff and CEO. Lance Corporal to Corporal, Lance Corporal, Corporal to Corporal, Sergeant. Corporal to Sergeant. Yeah. That's how they get promoted. That's how they should be getting promoted. Hello. Yeah. Uh, from now on. So what are your thoughts on the NCO panel? Oof. Yeah, take a deep breath on that one. <laughs> you know, uh, for those that don't know, Mar Admin 200 slash 16 is the... Uh, Josh came ready. Hello. The Mar <laughs> Admin that created... The requirement from headquarters Marine Corps. Shout out General Neller to uh, to do an <laughs> NCO panel. Um, I think there's positives for the NCO panels, uh, but what where my issue lies in it is it's an enterprise level requirement for promotion. What does that so mean? So let me translate that. The headquarters Marine Corps says this is a requirement to get promoted. To me, that says, oh, you got to have a passing PFT, you got to have a passing CFT. Those are headquarters Marine Corps requirements for promotion. Okay. So the NCO panel being in a MAR admin is a headquarters Marine Corps requirement for promotion. Okay. And what I saw happen over the last, you know, eight years. Go ahead. Why wasn't it in the promotion manual? That's my issue with it. Mm-hmm. I've contacted the, the promotion <laughs> branch to try to work with people. Where to are you at? Pro- promotion branch, where are you at? Right? Speak on it. I've also sent up a letter requesting that the commandant and the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps Look at some of my ideas to actually codify this to make it fair across the Marine Corps because right now it's not fair. Mm. It's not, and it's impacting ret- retention. Okay, so okay. Now this is a reason why I was told. Tell me if you've heard this or or if you you know why this was created in the first place because at the time General Neller was tra- you know they travel a lot they go around the Marine Corps they're asking service members. Are you ready to be a corporal? Are you ready to be a sergeant? Yeah. And the amount of times that he, they were told no, yeah, was a lot. Yeah. And there's a, I have, I've had a lot of Marines say that. That was one question that, mm-hmm. my understanding, we were required to ask on the panels: Are you? Do you want to be a sergeant? No, yeah. I don't feel like I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. That question, I don't think that's actually in the Mar Admin. And every different level, every different it's MSC, not. yeah, every different MSC is. Is requires a different. They're doing it differently, right? So, like yeah. the MLG when it first came out in Pendleton, I believe this was like a fifteen-page document that the Marines had. You had to be in it was like, like a meritorious. Board. You had to be in yeah. dress it blue. Out, it was literally like you a had to be be in dress blue A B C D E F G. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Bring your mom. Right. <laughs> and a bouquet of flowers. Right. And your kids and family. <laughs> but then division, <laughs> you show up with a cigarette hanging out of right. your mouth and no no skivvy shirt on. <laughs> and then in, in some places they don't even have it. It just you yeah. just come. That's the air wing. I left them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, three five we two. We did ours. Hey, we hey, did three ours. five two had it. We did. We, ha- we have an NCO panel. <laughs> yeah. This is this is where it really struck home for me is because I see my outstanding Marines being non rec because they don't have you know whatever qualification or yeah. uh, you know we're looking in detail into what their, their recommendation right CDI CDQAR those type of things that they're trying to add into the JPEs right now yeah. to give them extra points for promotion and those types of things. But like you're non wrecking that individual Marine, but the Marines, some of the Marines down the line are not even doing the NCO panel. Yeah. Or they're doing some watered down version that just puts them in front of two senior people and they say, yeah, this dude's ready to get promoted. This gal's ready to get promoted. I think that's unfair. Now, as a, as a non air wing Marine, 
coming to the air wing, do you feel on those NCO panels, let's say I'm a corporal going for a sergeant, would you non-rec me because I do not, I'm not a CDI, I don't have a, that qualification? No, Why? I would not. Uh, you know, one is, is, is there's a mix, right? The air wing thinks the billets are everything. I don't think the billets is everything. Because yeah. you might have a lat move guy that came in as a corporal. Yeah. And he's got a lot of experience as a leader. Yeah. He just needs to catch up on his quals. Yeah, right? give, him, give, him, give him six months. Right. right. Let's just look and see at the individual. I, I want to know, one, do you have good character? Are you going to build trust with your Marines? Do you actually care about your Marines? Those are mainstay for me. And then the other part is, do you set a positive example? Or are you always negative Nancy, right? Ooh. Always complaining about the Marine Corps. Meanwhile, you stay Is it in. okay to complain? It's okay to complain, How do within, you complain your, if... within your peers, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, so you can get some perspective for someone that you trust. But, like, if you are a corporal or a sergeant and you're complaining out in front of your junior Marines, yeah. that's not it. I love yeah. that. Right, 100%. Yeah. When I was a Lance Corporal, I used to complain all the time, right? Yeah. In, oh, in this front, sucks. Oh, that sucks. Right? He sucks. <laughs> you right. suck. Yeah. My <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> hey, I had a, a, a motivated Marine, retired Sergeant Major uh, Christopher Reynoso. Uh, he pulled Hello. me aside. He was a sergeant. He pulled me aside. He said, hey, when I got selected for Corporal, he said, hey, all the complaining is done. Mm. You want to complain, complain to your peers. Do not complain in front of your Marines. It's weak. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. And, he, and that was something that stuck wow. with me. 20 something years ago. Wow. Right. And, and, um, if that's you're, a powerful message. I mean, if you're being like, hey, let's look at this from perspective, there's a difference between complaining and saying, hey, we need to take actionable steps. Sure. To be clear, I'm not complaining about the NCO panel. I think it's great. It gets in front of them. I've had different perspectives, right? I've had Gunny say non wreck this Marine. And then the leadership across the board looking at it like, wait a minute, this guy's pretty good compared to across yeah. our, our unit. Because yeah. it's a tool for the CEO and Sergeant Major, right? Yeah, that, yeah for like the population that we have. Let's level it out. What, is yeah. the, what, are, what kind of NCOs do we want in our unit, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we want to you know, create the best pop best Marines to get promoted. The problem that I have with it is when we're doing it and someone else down the line is not or someone in the Marine Corps is not doing an NCO panel, they're pro sometimes they're promoting Marines that are overweight. And what that creates is they're friends across the line. Why? Because they live in our glorious barracks. Mm -hmm. They're all friends. And they are. They, and then they know when someone didn't have to do the NCO panel because they're like, they're working on their uniform that night and they're like, man, I got a PFT tomorrow. And the dude's like, well, you got a PFT tomorrow. You already ran one. Like, well, I got just I got the NCO panel or I got to mm -hmm. run a CFT. Right. My policy was if the Marine just ran a, a PFT last month, why are we going to make him run it again? Is he cleared for this semi-annual period? OK, he's good to go. Let's move forward. There we go. Right. That's exactly how that I was, feel. That was one of my too grades. many people start, for the units that did do it. There was too many, too many that I saw mm -hmm. that were trying to make it like a meritorious board. Right. And it's not. And it isn't yeah. that, man. It's yeah. not that at all. You and know, that takes so much time. You know, I, I've streamlined the NCO panel on my unit and then I did all the calculations for the time it takes for Marine standing. In line, because in the maintenance, in the air wing, there's a dollar association to a maintenance hour. Yeah. It's $43 yeah. and some change wow. ma per maintenance hour. When you add that up across 40 Marines standing in line outside waiting to do an NCO panel every month, and then you add up the leadership that's going into these NCO panels, taking four days a, a month to do an NCO panel, you're you're using a lot of money yeah. in the Marine Corps, right? The, the civilian world, they care about that, right? The head yeah. count, how much money's going towards what. But in the Marine Corps, we just put people there and we, we're taking their most precious time, which, our mm -hmm. most precious asset, which is time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you need to condense it and have a schedule. Mine had 10 minute intervals. So Marines, they showed up in 10 minutes and then we would communicate if we were ahead of schedule or behind schedule. So Marines are not standing around wasting time. Well, here's something, too, with the NCO panels that I really found that was an amazing leadership tool. Because when you really drill it down and you look at the numbers, what you're going to find, why are we non-wrecking Marines? Let's break it down into, let's say, five different categories. And then the next quarter, why are we non-wrecking Marines? And who are our repeat non-wreckers? And are they for the same reason? As a leader, you can look at those reasons, right. and when 73% is due to PME, it's really not hard to understand where you should put some focus. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a leadership tool that if you use it right, if you just use it, please use it. It's a yeah. requirement. <laughs> and let's get it in the promotion manual for real. Yeah, please. Um, uh, and then the other part to that, to your, you can also say, where are my, you could target sections. Oh. Right? You can say, oh, this you, you, particular there's section, my, 100%. what's the staff NCO doing? Now I can say, hey, staff NCO, I noticed that you have not been doing counseling or you've got a lot of Marines that failed the PFT. 
are you running PT? Why are you not running Ooh. PT if you are or not, right? Like, why are you doing these things? When was the last time you counseled your sergeant? How are you developing your sergeants? What are they doing on a daily basis? Let's get involved. Where can I help? Mm -hmm. You need me to show up? And people take offense to that when the sergeant major says that if it's not genuine. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But like, hey, you want me to show up? I'll come up there and I'll show up. You want me to work out once a week with your guys? I'll do it. I'm not the fastest. I got a lot of injuries going on, but I'm going to go out there and work with the Marines. And the Marines care about the fact that you show up for them. Exactly. That's it, man. You know, and that's Be half there. the battle. And, and you know, when I ran when I ran the the S3 shop at, at my battalion, that was at, at, at the BCP program specifically, which is what we're actually going to talk about next. But you know what? I think this subject is a subject that we should leave to the next episode. Guys, if you guys have been enjoying our conversation, we're going to have a part two to this conversation. I'm going to link it right here so that way you guys can find it easily. Make sure that you guys subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of great content going on. Next week, we're going to have um, uh, uh, an immigrant couple that immigrate from Africa. Wow. wow. Listen, immigrate from Africa with nothing, with nothing. And they became multimillionaires. And now they own two, several different companies here in the United States. That's going to be next week, guys. Wow. Make sure that you guys tune in nice. and that you guys see all the content that we have for you guys. Barry, where can people find you? You know the vibes. TikTok, at Bull52772. Instagram, at Bull5277. Click the link in the bio. The call is free. The change is forever. Josh, where can, if, if there's Marines that are looking to reach out and get some, a different perspective, because yeah. I really like your perspective, where can people reach out to you? Because he's a recruiter. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> damn, uh, damn you. I, just, yeah. um, I'll just be quiet on that one. Uh, got a lot of love for drill instructors. Um, you can reach me at uh, jbcell82 on Instagram. JBCell82 at Instagram. You guys already know, if you like guys like our guests, make sure you guys drop a like, drop a subscribe, and I will see you guys in part two. See you guys soon. Welcome to the